Greetings and welcome everyone to uh, the Chicago Minority Business Development Center, Export Center's Organizational Development Course. Uh, we're proud that you all could participate and join this virtual webinar uh, over the next few days. You're gonna find that you will receive a ton of great information on building your business, sustaining your business and growing your business, which is a part of the development aspect that we do here at the Chicago Minority Supplier Development Council. Uh, again, over the next few days, you're gonna learn some things about um, SWOT analysis, uh, building and developing uh, a business plan, all the great things that I think are necessary to uh, keep businesses sustainable today. Um, so thank you again for attending. We welcome you. Look forward to some additional programs and content that we will have between now and the end of the year. And who knows what 2021 will bring us all. So thank you again. I'll turn it over to the next person on the program. And I appreciate you all participating. Thank you, Vince. Um, just a few things before uh, we get started, a, a few housekeeping uh, rules. If, uh, if, if you guys have any questions, please use the uh, chat feature um, and uh, keep your mics muted. Um, and I think that's it right now. So without further ado, I'd like to introduce Dr. Sherry Henderson, who will be the trainer for this uh, organization development course, uh, Dr. Sherry Henderson. Hello, hello everyone. First of all, I just wanna say thank you to the Chicago MSDC and thank you to the Chicago MBDA Export Center. Uh, Chicago has a very special place in my heart. Uh, it is one of my favorite councils <laughs> uh, to work with as well as uh, thank you Pat personally and Robert and Devery. Um, thank you so much for this opportunity. I am really excited and looking forward to this course. Uh, it's something that uh, our company overall as a firm specializes in growing and helping small and medium-sized businesses uh, expand and grow and scale and build capacity, all those great things that we hear all the time. But now we actually have a chance to sit down together uh, through this course. Uh, it will be uh, somewhat informal. So I do want to hear uh, your input. I do want to hear your feedback on uh, how we can specifically help you uh, in your business. So I'll be trading my glasses on and off throughout the course as well, uh, as this has, this has become the new normal. Uh, so I just want to uh, thank everyone again. Uh, so we're going to get started uh, right away. Uh, there'll be a lot of content, a lot of information. And so please grab your notebooks, grab your pens and uh, take notes uh, during the course, uh, this three day course uh, that we'll have this time together, uh, just going over and reviewing information. And um, I'm gonna just say it right now. I know that after going through this course, your business will be bigger, it'll be better, it'll be stronger. Uh, and so on the other side of this, right, you'll have uh, some new information to grow and expand your business. So let's jump right in with our operational development. Actually, what I wanna do on one of our slides, there is a uh, sort of getting to know you. If you guys can uh, unmute yourself and um, just tell me just quickly uh, your business industry, how many years uh, you've been in business, uh, maybe your name and your business. We could have five or six people just so I'll have an idea of who's on the line and uh, the industry you're in. How about Miss Owens or Jamisha? Misha McDonald? <clears throat> She's connecting to auto. What about Miss Owens while she's in the process of doing that? Hi, good evening. Good evening. Um, my name is Carmel. Um, I have been an entrepreneur for many, many years. I did own a hair salon at once and I closed it down and I went to Peace Corps. And now that I'm back, I'm trying to figure out what I wanna do. So I recently started a, an online retail store called Cine Chic. And basically getting started with it, I basically started featuring items that I purchased while I was in Senegal. Okay. So now I'm gonna expand my business to offer more things. Okay, great. 
Um, what about Lenora or Dr. Okinogum? Or let's see, who else we have on here? Tish or Mr. Dorsey? Okay. I think Mr. Dorsey was talking, but we can't hear you. Oh, I'm sorry, can you hear me now? Yes, hi, Mr. Dorsey. Hello there, Dr. Sherry. I am um, on here to support you and this great venture and learn a great deal about business expansion and taking the business to another level. Um, also representing the franchise enterprise, which is the biggest, baddest and boldest franchise development company in the world and um, definitely want to um, work with you to make sure that uh, we can help people achieve their goals and dreams through franchising. Okay, awesome. What about Travis? Uh, good afternoon. My name is Travis Latham. I've been a fellowship fleet limousine and bus company. Uh, we've been in business for about a little over 14 years now, providing corporate ground transportation using sedans, SUVs, stretch limousines, Sprint Mercedes Sprinter vans, and motor coach buses. Awesome. So as you're signing on, uh, as individuals are signing on, I'm not sure if Johnny Johnson uh, wants to chime in or not, but if you could please just put in the chat your industry and so we can better assist you because many of the things are organizational development it are um, industry specific. So I wanna make sure that uh, we're providing the information and, and uh, that's gonna be best for your industry. Hello, can everyone hear me? Yes, yeah, so we're gonna, um, I see you Tish, yes. So okay. we're gonna go ahead and get started with the PowerPoint presentation. And um, organizational development, uh, as everyone knows, is just an opportunity uh, for you to increase your performance through measurable actions. And so as we're going through the various slides and keeping a very close track on the time, I want you to uh, take in each area, each segment of the presentation so that you're able to figure out, you know, what, what pieces of this puzzle, what nuggets from this presentation you're going to be able to actually apply to your company. Um, we want to make sure during this time that uh, we utilize organiza organizational management so that we can stay competitive um, as, as an individual company. Uh, even in the midst of everything that's going on, we want to make sure that we're taking a look uh, at organizational management as a whole. So again, uh, if you're just signing on with us, I saw some people uh, in the waiting room, uh, feel free to put in the chat uh, the name of your business, the industry you're in, uh, and how many years you've been in business. And that'll give me a better idea of who's here in the course today. So uh, just a quick course overview, uh, just to prepare your minds. The first uh, day we'll talk about defining organizational development, um, assessing your current development plan. Uh, we'll review a SWOT analysis and you'll have an opportunity to actually start a SWOT analysis in your breakout session. And then um, as well, we'll review the seven steps of creating a development plan because I really want the businesses to uh, have tangibles. So as you're leaving this uh, three-day course, that you're going to leave this course with information. I know we all have participated in so many uh, webinars and seminars and Zoom classes and you, you name it, but I want to make sure that this course, you're actually going to walk away with some tangibles that's really going to um, increase your uh, value in your company, as well as um, you know making your company just better overall. So we'll talk about pre-development, what that looks like uh, for your company. And of course, strategic planning is always on the list uh, and utilizing the, the SMART model for um, implementing our strategic planning. And then day two, uh, we'll continue with the steps, uh, how to align our plan, 
how to align our plan with the various regulations and compliance uh, standards and best practices and costs, looking at those three main areas for um, plan alignment uh, with your company. And then step four, how are we going to best communicate that plan? Um, locally, internationally, internally, externally, utilizing the VIN uh, diagram, and then uh, implementing a plan, uh, monthly, quarterly, semi-annually, and annually, being able to determine what's the best way to do that. And then on our final day, uh, day three, uh, there'll be topics of discussion will include a continuation of um, implementing your plan. And this will be a very exciting day because uh, you'll have an opportunity to do one of my favorite things I like to do uh, for business. And that's to create a timeline, a timeline that um, again, you'll be able to follow, uh, your clients will be able to follow, your staff will be able to follow, and this will create some consistency in the overall business model that you're currently implementing. And then uh, step six, uh, reviewing the plan. How often should we review our plans? Um, and then step seven, plan to make revisions and updates. So make a plan to plan, right? Um, and so we'll talk about that on the third day. So that's just an overall um, process of what we'll be doing. If there's anyone on here now who does not have a workbook, please feel free to put your email in the chat and um, one of us will email it to you. I believe- Jerry, Robert I just, can I step in for a minute? I will upload the document into the chat. So if people do not have the document, they can download it directly from the chat. Awesome. And then, and then one more thing, Sherry, uh, if you just want to take a one or two minutes to uh, tell more about you for people who really don't know who you are and your background real quick, that that would be great, I think. OK. OK, sure. Thank so you. this is this is a great place to uh, insert that. So um, I'm Sherry Henderson. And I am the founder and president of the global business development firm. I have the pleasure of operating two international companies. So first, it's a global business development firm. And um, we have, of course, the franchise enterprise. Our senior VP, Michael Dorsey, is on as well as uh, some of our other team members. Um, so we uh, specialize in helping businesses go global. Um, and you'll see our business timeline for the global business development firm in the presentation. Uh, I am a native Detroiter. Uh, I live in two cities sometimes, Detroit and Chicago. Um, I also am a international business consultant uh, just recently with the World Bank, assisting them uh, with working with various countries around the world who wanted to establish better business laws and franchise laws. And so you'll, you'll uh, be able to um, connect with me after this. I'll have my information uh, on the slides at the end if you have any additional questions, but I've uh, been working in global business development for about 25 years. And so uh, this year, actually, I celebrate my 25th year uh, in uh, business development, global business development. And so that's just a, a little snapshot about me. So first of all, let me just congratulate all of the businesses that are here today uh, in this presentation with us. So prior to COVID, SBA said there were 30.7 million businesses in the US. So you are one of the 30.7 million. And I just wanna congratulate all of the businesses that are still standing today, that have weathered the storm and, that, and are still moving forward. We know that we lost a huge percentage of small businesses uh, during this time. And it's projected that approximately 31% of businesses I recently heard uh, Ron Busby, the president of the U.S. Black Chamber of Commerce, say that we lost an upwards of 40,000 Black-owned businesses. And so if you're in business today and you're still in business today, 
after all we've gone through this year, I wanna congratulate you. You can give yourself a round of applause. So let's just move right into organizational development. So organizational development is the engagement of people to accomplish a better organizational performance by creating clear goals, objectives, procedures, and timelines. There are many benefits, as you all know, to adopting a plan. And it's important that the entire team is able to buy into the plan. Um, the plan should, be, of course, be led by upper management and adopted by other members um, in your company or in your business or within your organization. So whether you are working with um, a company and you have employees, or even if you're with an association and you have team members, um, organizational management is very important. It helps you save money and it also builds value in your company. It's one of those things that it's, a, it's, it's necessary for you to continue to grow and expand your brand and grow and become a bigger, better company. So there are three uh, elements to organizational development. Three that I wanna touch on. Uh, historically, uh, there's climate, culture, and changes. And so um, some companies do this very well. And I just want to be able to, you know, share some examples and have you take a look at your company while we're going through this presentation. But climate, what is the unique personality? What is the mood of your company? Um, the unique personality of who you are and what you do, um, how, are your, how are your practices or your products uh, developing the overall climate of your uh, company. And so there are some companies that are out there who, do, who really do this very well. Um, for example, uh, when we look at climate, when you think of companies like Google, Google has invested um, hundreds of thousands of dollars to create a special climate uh, with their particular staff and their employees. When you look in a Google office, you'll see bean bags, uh, workout equipment, you'll see uh, just, a, just you know, all these things, uh, cappuccino makers, and just uh, is creating a full atmosphere, a climate that is really reflective of who they are as a brand. Uh, recently, I saw a video and one of the things that, uh, the Google representative spoke about was that all of these things are included in that Google office so that the employees don't have to leave. They're creating a space or a climate where they can feel comfortable there, where they can work out there, where they can have friends there. There are arcade games there. Uh, and so they're building uh, a work climate. So you have to ask yourself, what does your work climate look like and feel like? Um, what are some things that are in your office space that makes it inviting? Or what are some products and services that you offer that convey the climate um, that you represent as a company? Another business that does this very well is Starbucks. Uh, Starbucks, when you walk in, uh, it's just a, a location where individuals know that they can go there have a $4 cup of coffee, pull out their laptop. Uh, they cre they've created a climate that really defines their brand and who they are and what they represent. Marriott uh, is another company that does that very well. Um, their climate of uh, supporting their employees and offering uh, services and making their employees feel like they're part of the Marriott family. That is the climate that they have adopted for their brand. When you go into a Marriott hotel, one of the things that you notice is that they're wearing a name tag and it'll say Sherry Henderson from Detroit, Michigan or whatever city that that individual is from. Uh, Marriott wants them to, although they may be from another city, they want them to feel welcome. They want them to uh, be a part of this climate. The next area of, of course is culture. What are the deeply seated values and norms and behaviors as shared by team members? So this is what we believe in, what do we stand for? Um, every once in a while, it's good to be able to walk back into your company and say, okay, what are we doing here, right? Uh, what do we believe in? What does this company 
uh, really stand for? What are the behaviors and norms that are deeply rooted in our particular organization or business? For example, you'll oftentimes see this in um, cultural chambers of commerce. They're all there specifically, say if it's the Hispanic Chamber of Commerce. Um, they're all there specifically for the goal to help Latino businesses grow and expand. One that's right there in Chicago, uh, Clemente Nicaro, he's over Negocios now. He's a really good friend of mine. Uh, they're deeply uh, focused on their particular values and norms for their business. Um, again, building and growing the Latino community and businesses um, that are represented there, uh, Negocios Now. And another place where you'll see where culture really stands out is our women-owned organizations. Um, I currently am the president of the Michigan Association of Female Entrepreneurs. And our goal, again, is to focus specifically on advancing and growing and helping women-owned businesses uh, grow and expand and their uh, various entities. And so you'll see culture really stands out. Um, also, there are businesses that have a very uh, strong green initiative where their goal is to uh, help their members or employees or staff or clients become uh, more sustainable. And so that is the culture of that company, right? When we talk about changes, there are some companies that do changes very well. <laughs> Probably all of you who made it through the pandemic, uh, you do change very well. Uh, if you're unable to pivot, if you're unable to adjust, if you're unable to uh, complete evaluations of your company, it's gonna be difficult for you uh, to stay afloat. And so uh, change is very important and you need to be flexible enough to change. Again, a great example of companies that do change very well. And, and because part of, a, part of the reason why I know this is because I had the opportunity, as I stated before, to work in this franchise space. Uh, franchise businesses tend to adopt a change much faster because you have one command coming from the top and all of the other businesses uh, below uh, are mandated to make those changes. And so a great example of that is McDonald's. So uh, many of you that are on the Zoom today, uh, if you attended or uh, patronized, uh, was a customer of right McDonald's uh, years ago, you were introduced uh, to McDonald's as a child by way of um, cookies, McDonald's land cookies, right? Uh, McDonald's land ice cream cones as a child. McDonald's knows how to change and follow you throughout the stages of your life. So they went from McDonald's land cookies to McFlurries as a teenager, now to McCafe, right? McDonald's knows how to pivot, to follow their customer as they're growing and expanding through their life or growing and just growing throughout their life. They know how to follow their customer. Just recently, last week, uh, Wendy's made an announcement that they were going to do introduce a new business model. That business model is a drive-through only location. Now they have drive-through stores now, of course, as we all know, but you will not be able to actually walk into this store. Uh, they're going to have a drive-through only model, and that's something that they're changing into. So oftentimes I see change uh, happening uh, rather quickly uh, in the franchise space. They're able to grow and they're able to pivot. So again, uh, I wanna make sure that as you are looking at your company and we're looking at organizational um, development, I wanna make sure that you are looking at what is the climate of your business? What's the culture of your business? And what changes are you able to implement? So let's start with the basics. Let's start with the basics. You need to be able to answer the who, the what, the when, the where, and the how of your company. And we put the who, the what, the when, the where, and the how on the poll. 
Because as you're driving down the street, oftentimes you'll look to a pole. You'll look to the pole. It'll either have a stop sign or a yield sign, or uh, you're looking to the pole for further directions. You have to sort of train your staff and train your team to look at a, to a specific area to identify what direction we need to take. So there should be a designated who, what, when, where, why, how person uh, in your company. And I want all of you to, to sort of consider yourself as being either a who, a what, a when, a where, a why, or a how. And let's break those down. So who? Who is the personnel or departments who are in charge of completing a specific task? The what? A description of what each department is responsible for. The where? The information on where daily operations will take place. The when? The deadlines for when the tasks and goals are to be completed. And then the course, the how, the how much? the cost, the amount each department needs to complete their task. So when we talk about the who, in your company, there are specific individuals from management on down who have a set roles or responsibilities and they may come by way of a job description. You would be surprised the number of clients that we work with who do not have job descriptions for their team or their staff. It's essential that we start looking at some of these things and implementing um, these things in order to create the organizational plan that we want. Every single person that is working for your company should have a designated role and responsibility. Every single manager, every single uh, tech person, marketing person, your sales team, everyone should have a clear idea on what it is they're supposed to do and what specific tasks they're supposed to complete. A description of each department uh, and what it's responsible for. So uh, making sure that it's departmentalized when there's a task at hand that has to be done. If we're planning an event, who's responsible for that? If we're holding a seminar, who's responsible for that? If we're hosting a client or clients coming in, who's responsible for making sure that uh, our clients are taken care of. If we're having a member's appreciation, who's responsible for member retention? So making sure that there's a description um, throughout each department. The where, the information on where daily, daily operations will be taking place. The when, of course, the deadlines. And uh, oftentimes we um, don't set appropriate deadlines and we find ourselves in a position where days have gone by, months have gone by, and the task still has not been completed. For example, when COVID first hit and we were all working from home, I just knew I was going to have time to reorganize my closet. <laughs> I just knew that I was going to have time to shipped all the summer clothes over here and the winter clothes over there. And I just had that in the back of my mind that there was something that I wanted to do. It was something I wanted to achieve. And many of you have deadlines and you have things you wanna do, but there's no deadline rather. Uh, it's important that we set those deadlines to when that task is actually gonna be completed. If you say, I want to procure 10 new customers, or I want to, have 10, I want to procure 10 new contracts uh, by the year 2025, um, you're setting those deadlines and you're going to work on what it takes to actually accomplish those goals. And then, of, of course, the how much, the bottom line, um, making sure that you know, we're taking a look at uh, the overall cost of all of these things that you, know, you may have a team that's uh, working together to put together this new plan, but you must always consider the cost. You know, consider what this is actually going to uh, cost the team to implement. And can we afford it? <laughs> you know, at the end of the day, can we afford it? So 
Uh, I have names here because I was going to put you all on the poll today <laughs> uh, and allow you to be the who, what, when, where, how. But I just want you to personally uh, take on one of the who, what, where, when, how. And let's go over some of the questions our members or team or employees may have. The first question, my training was for two long weeks. I've only been working here for three days. What am I supposed to be doing? Who could tell me which person on the poll would be responsible for uh, answering that question? You have a new employee. They've been there for two weeks. They went through training. So that tells you something about your training. Your training might not have been as effective as you thought it was because you have an employee who just sat in training with you for two weeks and three days in, they're still not sure what it is they're supposed to do. We have a problem, right? So who, who can unmute themselves and share with me the who, what, when, where, how? Who would actually be responsible for helping that person? Where's Travis? Is he still on here? Travis is here. Hello, Travis. Hey. So uh, I would think the who would be the immediate supervisor. The immediate supervisor. Um, the what would obviously be the training. Uh, the why would be why it's not effective. The how I would assume would be, <clears throat> excuse me, how to correct it. Maybe it's taking the training again. <laughs> maybe, maybe some additional training, maybe modifying the training. Uh, <clears throat> excuse me, the where would be, you know, wherever your, your, the job site is and when would be immediately. <laughs> yes, yes, absolutely. Very good. Okay, so Travis, hang in there with me. Um, the next question from our team member or employee is, I need to find the person responsible for employee or member retention. Can you help me? Um, so, so the who would member retention, that's employee retention, correct? Mm-hmm. Okay. Employee so, or member, or if it's an organization, it could be member retention. Uh, okay. So uh, I think this could be a couple of different who's, but I would say the, the who would be, uh, ask another employee, an existing employee. Mm -hmm. uh, the what would, would obviously be, well, what makes you happy working here? What, what, you know, what, what makes you successful? What makes you happy? Um, the why would be uh, because we want to keep more people retained. Uh, how would be, is it more training? Is it more money? Is it more authority? Is it, uh, who knows what the how would be. The when would, I don't think it's necessarily immediate. I think it, at least for us, it's a, con, a constant uh, process. So it's a long-term activity. It's a, actually part of maybe our daily um, culture. And then the, the where would be internally within the company. That's good. That's good. Okay, our third question. Is there money in the budget for my department to purchase new iPhones or laptops next year? Is there uh, money in the budget? <laughs> so so you, before I answer this, you, you know, one of the questions I was going to put in the chat is, as a business owner, how do you avoid being all of these at the same time? Mm -hmm. the who, the what, yeah, but that's a whole nother story. Uh, but I would say that the who would be uh, who's ever in control of the budget, whether it's the uh, immediate supervisor or if it's the, you know, the, the, the corporate um, treasury department or the, the business owner, uh, the, the what would be, you know, obviously accessing funds, um, to secure uh, these items, the why would be 
uh, why do you need iPhones you know, <laughs> for this? Uh, the, the, the how would be, how do you actually procure the funds, whether it's uh, taking it from uh, existing coffers or, or moving funds around to, to secure the, the transaction. Uh, the when would be based on the need for the phones. And I would assume that, you know, needing iPhones isn't necessarily immediate. Um, but then the, the where would be, uh, once again, internal within the organization. Very good. And our next question, is the report due in two weeks or three weeks? I forgot. And we know that this happens all the time when there's no organization in your company mm -hmm. and there's no deadlines or calendars or you know, when, when, when information is uh, transferred verbally, uh, we mm -hmm. have these types of questions. Uh, so here's the question. Is the report due in two weeks or three weeks? I forgot. Um, so I would say that the who is actually the person asking the question. That person needs to to find that answer. <clears throat> Though the what is obviously, um, you know, is is this due in two or three weeks? Uh, when you want to find this information, I would say immediately because you need to know. Uh, and, and why? Uh, I think because deadlines are important. And how? I would think you'd go back to the source of where you got the information. So if it was verbally or if it was through some email or, or somehow, but yeah, I would suspect that, that that information is readily available. And then where obviously is going to, to wherever the source of information is. And we know, again, these types of things happen all the time in our companies. Um, but putting the right processes and information in place, just like Travis uh, suggested, the, and all those are really great ways to resolve these uh, questions and answer these questions so that our employee or team member uh, have a better understanding of what's going on. Like, like Travis said, we want to know uh, if it's due in two weeks or three weeks, because you could be a weekend already. <laughs> you could be a weekend already. And, uh, there's a hard deadline. And if it's two weeks and you're already a week in and it takes two weeks to do it, you're already behind the eight ball. So there's some things uh, that needs to be communicated fast, quick, and in a hurry um, just to make sure that uh, things are being completed on time. And then the last one, Travis says, do we have enough warehouse space to accept this new purchase order? We know that uh, small businesses sometimes will um, have opportunities that they can't procure, right? Because mm -hmm. uh, they don't have the space. So this is a question uh, that we have. Um, do we have enough warehouse space to accept this new purchase order from AT&T or uh, United Airlines or GM? Mm -hmm. Yeah, so uh, I think that goes to who's ever managing or overseeing the, the space itself and understands you know, what may be coming or going from the space, you know, in the future. Uh, the what obviously is knowing what the, the warehouse, you know, do you have enough space uh, in the warehouse? The when, uh, I would think you would need to, to know like immediately because you'd want to let your customer or prospect know if you can, can handle uh, the situation because you don't want to commit to something and then ultimately fail and then damage the relationship. And at the same time, you don't want to have it linger on and have that, that prospect or customer go to somebody else who may get them an answer sooner. And, and why you need to know, because I mean, this is revenue generating, you know, that that's why, I mean, that's, that's extremely important. And, and where do you go uh, for that information, I think it goes back to once again, who's ever managing, uh, you know, that that space itself, uh, and then how how do you procure that information? I think it's you know a couple of questions of whoever's managing that that space. Mm -hmm, very good. And does anyone have anything else to add? 
Is Miss Owen still with us? Okay, so let's come out and take our first poll. Can everyone see the poll? Does your business currently use an operational development plan? Okay, a few more seconds and we're gonna close the poll. Okay, so only 25% of you said yes, 58% uh, of you said you would like to in the future, and 17% of you said um, not at this time. Okay, so let's end our polling here. Are you guys getting feedback? Okay. So we're gonna move forward to our SWOT analysis. This is a great tool for you to use for those of you who are considering, um, of course, starting and creating a plan within your company. Um, we oftentimes will use SWOT for a variety of reasons. Um, if you have never used a SWOT before uh, in your company, again, it's a great tool for you to use. So for those of you who have never used SWOT before, in your um, workbook, there is a uh, worksheet and we're actually going to do um, a SWOT analysis um, right after this together in our breakout sessions. And so um, let me first go over uh, the different areas of the SWOT and uh, what each segment of the SWOT means. So S meaning of course strengths, weaknesses, opportunities, and threats. S the things that your company does well. What are you known for? What do people uh, come to you for? Um, if you're a restaurant, you know, is it uh, your lasagna? Is it your peach cobbler? Is it your chocolate cake? Is it your you have the best burger in town? You have the best uh, vegan burger in town. Um, what are you known for? Uh, in Atlanta, there's a vegan uh, burger place called Slutty Vegan, and she has lines all the way down the street. Um, in, uh, historically, you know, you know the restaurants to go to. Back in the day, people would talk about Harold's Chicken and just a, a whole host of businesses that that was their strength. The product that they were serving, people wanted to go to that restaurant for that particular uh, food item or entree. So um, that became, you know, what they were known for. That's what they do well. Qualities that separate you from your competitors. You know, why you? Why is it that there could be five restaurants, you know, uh, on the in a row or on a strip, but there's a line out the door for that one? A particular restaurant? What is it about your service that you offer uh, that's competitive? What is it about your limousine transportation company that makes me always want to come to you uh, when I have clients in town or a special event? 
What is it about uh, your clothing store um, that really separates you from your competitors? Is it your customer service? Is it the fact that you call me when items are in stock that you know that I like and love? <laughs> um, what is it about your company that really stands out? What are those internal resources such as skilled and now, uh, having that knowledgeable staff? Um, one of the things that I really like about Nordstrom's, and this is a true story, um, Nordstrom's, uh, they really keep a really good track. They really keep a great track on their customers. Um, I purchased a, a pair of shoes at Nordstrom's one, I think it was either Black Friday, I think it was. And I went in there, it was a pair of Via Spiga shoes. I went to Nordstrom's a year later, the same sales rep was there and he remembered me and he said, how are those Via Spigas working out for you? How did they work out for you? He remembered me. He remembered what I purchased, right? Um, and so it's always good to, you know, have that customer service. And people talk about, you know, Nordstrom service is hands down the best. And so, um, you know, that's what they're known for. That is a strength of their company, the quality and the customer service that they offer. Um, the tangible assets such as intellectual property, you know, what is it about your company? What do you have that no one can find anywhere else? Um, especially in, in the technology space, um, there's a company right in Chicago, FaZe. Um, they're, they're a company, but their product is called FaZe. They just launched a new technology and they're launching it in different uh, global markets around the world. And it's something that that's proprietary specifically uh, to their company. The weaknesses, things your company lacks, you know, where are their holes and spaces in your company? And it's very important that we, of course, look at the strengths, you know, what are we known for, um, but also where are those weaknesses? You know, what are we missing? What is it about our company that's not allowing us to grow or expand? What is it about our company that is keeping us, you know, at a certain level where we can't seem to break past that $1.2 million a year mark? You know, uh, how do we go from being that $1 million company to that $5 million company? What weaknesses um, do we have within our company or organization? Um, things that your competitors do better. Um, the access to capital sometimes is one that I hear often, but uh, the limitation of resources and the un unclear unique selling proposition. So we wanna look at our weaknesses because oftentimes correcting in this space right here will determine how well your company grows and uh, what opportunities, which is next, uh, will be presented to you. So when talked about opportunities, you know, um, this pandemic has been full of new opportunities, new opportunities. And it just, just really depends on um, the space that you're in. And again, how well you're able to pivot and grow. Um, you may be in a space where there's not many people that's doing what you do. Uh, there may you may be in a space where, uh, like I said, the press and the media coverage uh, of your company is available, and uh, you're able to get all this free press, just be all this free media based on something that you did uh, with your company. A really great example of this is during COVID, some of the restaurants when they couldn't get customers through the door, instead of allowing their food to spoil in the refrigerator and have all of that spoilage, they decided to make meals and um, serve our essential workers, our nurses, our doctors, our police officers and firefighters, uh, uh, the emergency technicians. You know, they took that, uh, they took the pandemic and turned it into a great opportunity uh, for to help someone and to give. Um, and when you find yourself in that space, you know most of those restaurants and companies who seize the opportunity, right? Um, who decided to pivot, they actually uh, 
did very well with media coverage. I mean, many of them got stories written about them in the newspaper. Almost all of the uh, news channels picked them up uh, and had them on the news, were actually in their restaurant, in their kitchens, watching them prepare meals as a way to say thank you for what they were doing. Um, and so they used that press and media coverage uh, of, about their company uh, to actually make more people aware of their company. And what that also did was for the people who were still out purchasing meals, they wanted to patronize them more uh, over the next guy because they were uh, so giving and willing. So they, they uh, used a catastrophe, if you will, and turned it into uh, an opportunity. Um, a lot of the businesses who were uh, probably in a, a different industry saw that uh, people staying at home was a great opportunity. Look how Zoom just expanded overnight. All these other media platforms were developed uh, because of COVID-19. Anyone that's in the gardening space, more people were staying home to, to work in their gardens. Uh, companies like Home Depot uh, put together a whole do-it-yourself home improvement kits where people could go in and purchase them. And just near my home, there's a Home Depot. There was a line all the way down the parking lot <laughs> around the bend of people picking up, you know, do-it-yourself home kits for home improvement since they were home already. Anyone who was in healthcare and sanitation and custodial and building management, you know, more companies wanted to, of course, make sure their businesses were COVID free and they wanted to make sure they had the necessary um, uh, protocols in place to, uh, for cleaning and sanitizing their businesses. So all of our clients who work in that space uh, seized a huge opportunity to grow and acquire uh, new clients and procure new contracts. And so always look at opportunities, uh, of course, as a way to grow and expand your business, as a way to emerge uh, in your business. And then T, the threats. You know, dealing with something like a pandemic was a threat in itself. You know, uh, what are the threats that can really come through and wipe your company out? You know, um, we often talk about, you know, emerging competitors, someone's doing exactly what you're doing, but that's a space that, you know, uh, some of the small businesses may feel when a big box store come in. You know, if you're a small uh, mom and pop shop or one-off store, as we call them in the franchise space, and, um, you know, you're, you're a small, small potato, right? And you have, you know, big box stores like Walmart and Target uh, coming in. It's very difficult for you to uh, maintain your clients and your customers. And so you want to always have a pulse on what those potential threats might be. Changing in uh, regulatory environments, you know, different rules and regulations uh, coming into play. And this one, uh, the negative press and media coverage is so uh, important. You know, someone can go online utilizing social media and define your entire company uh, in five seconds after you've spent 15 years building and growing a brand. They can go on Yelp or Facebook or Instagram, right? And talk about your company in a way uh, that will make people really discouraged to patronize you. You know, back in the day, uh, you primarily had the Better Business Bureau. Everybody sort of knew about the Better Business Bureau. If you were looking at a company and wanting to work with a company, you might have looked them up, right? Depending on how, what the engagement was going to be, you could possibly look them up on the Better Business Bureau uh, listing to see if they were fraudulent or if this was a company that you should or should not be doing business with. And that process, you know, the average person really didn't take time to, um, to look up the Better Business Bureau. Uh, some of your larger contracts for contract procurement may be, but overall, just the average consumer um, didn't always refer to the Better Business Bureau. But now, a customer has your entire identity at their fingertips. And if you haven't taken time to actually define yourself, 
right? If you haven't taken time to um, create your own web identity, which would be your website, your social media, your LinkedIn page, everything about you as a company, uh, your full web identity as we refer to it, then someone can easily uh, change the tone and uh, define your define your company. Just uh, their, your reputation is in the palm of their hands, literally. So you know we want to make sure that uh, we know what those are, and we uh, hire the appropriate people, uh, like social media managers, who can do the reputation uh, management and can alert you uh, when there is a negative press or a negative comment on social media. Um, that's very important that you address those issues uh, in a timely manner uh, during the pandemic. Um, and there needs to be a protocol on how those things are addressed. During the pandemic, one of our clients uh, is a restaurant. He's actually one of our franchise clients. Someone had purchased a sandwich wrap uh, from their location. And the person, when they got home, they took a picture of the, the sandwich wrap and said the sandwich wrap had mold on it. And then when they took the picture, of course, they put the restaurant's name up top. Do not uh, patronize this blankety blank, 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 blank company. Y'all know how y'all cousins do. Uh, <laughs> do not patronize uh, this company. Um, I have mold on my wrap. I'm never going there again. And so some people started chiming in instantly. So um, some people said, oh, I go there all the time. I've never had a problem. But then the naysayers, oh, I was there and the person was rude to me or the person was mean to me. And so this company works very hard at uh, maintaining a great reputation I know personally the work that they put in behind the scenes because we sort of go into the company and uh, define it and help them with all the small things they may be having issues with. And it really broke the, the heart of the owner uh, who again was one of the companies who was donating food, right, uh, for the pandemic. But uh, he was really concerned and sent this to me and said, what do we do? And uh, I instantly, you know, for them, uh, put on my Olivia Pope hat, went into damage control. And uh, the individual had actually called him and it was his wife who made the polls. But by the time I saw it, not only was there 25 comments, it had been shared 18 times, right? And so now it's all across the city. And so the business owner said, um, you know, what can we do to get them to take the post down, you know? And so um, the, I called the gentleman and I said, you know, uh, I'm the business consultant for ABC company and um, I know them personally. Uh, they're one of our clients and, you know, just really shared the backstory of the company of some great things they have done in the community for the kids and sports and you know, the hospital. And, and so the husband said, you know, uh, okay, I'll see if my wife will take it down. And so he called his wife on the three-way right then and there on the phone with me and said, you know, um, you know, we have Dr. Henderson on the phone. She's representing ABC company, honey, uh, they want you to take it down and they want to know what can they do to get you to take it down? She said, give me $300. <laughs> and so, uh, I said, okay, uh, let me get back with the owner. I said, now, uh, we want to make sure that you remove this post, um, you know, and take this down and all that, and although it's been shared all the, you know, 18 times. And uh, so I called the owner. I said, she's agreed to take it down and remove all, you know, her post. Um, I personally uh, caution our clients about setting these type of precedents with, with customers uh, financially, especially since they've been shared 18 times. But if $300 will get her to remove this post, um, hey, you know, he said, well, I'll pay it, I'll pay it. Just tell her to take it down, tell her to take it down. And so we, I called him back and we, you know, she presented proof 
uh, that she had taken it down and I went to her page and all that and he paid her $300. And so uh, that was a threat, right? Uh, to his reputation, to his company. And uh, it was important that that post was removed uh, from social media. Now, can the people who saw it unsee it? No, uh, but my recommendation is that they continue to do good, that they continue to, um, of course, address the threats as they occur, uh, but continue to be who they are as a company, continue to be the best ABC company, right, that they can possibly be. But these are uh, very serious threats uh, in this time. And so I want you all to take a look at your company. And one of the things that I recommend, we're gonna do it today, we're gonna do it tonight. But one of the things I recommend uh, after this course is that you offer your team members the opportunity to do a SWOT analysis, not just the management. I always tell our clients, I want, I would like the management to do a SWOT anal analysis, the, the secretary, the custodian, customers, every, everybody from the beginning of the house to the back of the house, because they'll have a different view on your company. Sometimes when you see companies do a SWOT, it's all of the upper management doing the SWOT. There's no input from anyone else in the company. So it's important that you have that broad stroke of opinions uh, contributing to the best SWOT analysis that you can possibly have uh, for your company. And so I'm going to unshare. I'll stop sharing. And oh, I see Demetrius Evans on, our international business attorney. Welcome. How are you? Um, She's right there in Chi-Town. Um, so those of you who have, if you do not have the workbook, feel free to, um, again, put your email in the chat. And we're going to break out for about 15, 20 minutes to give you an opportunity to complete your own SWOT analysis. So in the workbook file, you'll be able to see um, the actual SWOT analysis worksheet. And we'll put you in your breakout rooms. And if you have any questions while you're in your breakout rooms, feel free to raise your hand and I will jump in your room. I'll be jumping in and out of the rooms. Again, on your worksheet, you're just writing down a few of your strengths, a few of your weaknesses, opportunities, and threats. And we're gonna formalize this uh, with your with your staff and give them the opportunity to complete one as well, but we'll start one right now on their groups. And um, if the group members uh, could uh, make themselves available and join on, I, I believe most of the folks are back. Yes, I see everyone's back. Wonderful. Okay, so let's start. Um, off with the first group. Again, uh, we were reviewing uh, the SWOT analysis and um, each group was asked to discuss among yourselves the various strengths, strengths weaknesses, opportunities, and threats that you see uh, in your company and um, talk with your other uh, group members on some of the things uh, that they uh, have going on in their company. So let's have group one uh, report out. Uh, who is the group leader for uh, group one? I think that's Robert. Oh, uh, uh, when, when <laughs> I assign the group leader? <laughs> yeah. You know, I love that group. That group was so engaged and informative. <laughs> You know, uh, every time I checked in, they were talking and discussing. And so uh, group one, let's have it. 
Okay. Um, so it seemed like um, it seemed like the, the the strengths were pretty. Um, I don't know, across the board, you know, you know, servicing their clients, you know, doing the best job they can, you know, that it seemed like a lot of the, what I think a lot of was more or less the threats, I think, in, in our particular room in terms of COVID and a lot of businesses pivoting online and like, how do you pivot or compete with like online um companies, for example, with Miss Evans, she's a lawyer, you know, obviously you got all these, you know, legal zooms and, you know, rocket lawyers and like, you know, how do I compete with them, especially on cost and stuff like that. But, you know, there's, there's threats to that as well, because you don't know who uh, you're dealing with online. Are they a lawyer? You don't know if they're a lawyer and are they really doing what they're supposed to be doing legally correctly? So, um, you know, and a lot of it, you know, as I said, was COVID related, like how, how, how do these companies pivot, you know, to try to, you know, keep, keep their business growing? Um, so, so yeah, so that's what I got out of it. Miss Evans, did you want to add anything to that? Um, I guess I, I wanted, I wanted to add that there seemed to be so many strengths uh -huh. and, and, and the group like really aware you know, of the strengths and the opportunities that are before yeah. them. And I, I mean, that, that's just encouraging, yeah. you know, just to be associated or in a group where people are saying, yeah, but I see this and here's what I'm thinking about doing. It's just encouraging mm -hmm. as a business owner when it's, it's kind of hard, you know, it, it's, it's easy to get discouraged. Um, so when you have, like-minded people who are saying, yeah, I'm going through the same thing and here's how I'm looking at it. That was good. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Good, good. And what were some of the weaknesses in your various companies in your group? I mean, um, I don't think there was like an overall consensus. I mean, like, I don't think there was really too many weaknesses that were even mentioned, really. You know, most people don't want to admit they have weaknesses in their business. They think, oh, I'm that's why I'm a, and that's I'm, why I'm asking. Yeah, you know, well, <laughs> oh, I'm doing a great job. I'm doing this. I, I don't do anything wrong or, you know, this, that, and the other, you know, so, um, so that's what I got out of our group. So, you know. I, I, there wasn't too many weaknesses. Even Miss Evans, I don't really um, re remember exactly what you said your weakness was or what you. Yeah, I, I, I think that's the part I skipped over. <laughs> yeah, I'm gonna say I thought that really most people didn't want to talk about their weaknesses, and I think that would probably. I don't know if that was a common theme among the other rooms, but I guess we'll see once you get the rooms two, three, and four. <laughs> 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 yeah. oh, but I but I can I can share something, Dr. Sherry. Um, when you were when you were talking about the people that you hire, you know, right off, and then a week, two weeks, even three weeks into it, you know, you see them like they're not really sure what they're doing, and then they say, "I'm not really sure what I'm supposed to be doing," and I'm thinking, "We've gone over this." Oh, that's right. <laughs> uh huh. Uh huh. So um, put in, and, and I, it, it, if I understood that correct, what I have to do is make sure that that organizational plan is before them all the time. So they know this is what I'm doing. This is where I go. This is when it's due. Is mm -hmm. that, did I understand that correct? Yes, yes. And, and Travis did a, a really a phenomenal job that, that was unrehearsed <laughs> with us. But definitely, you know, you have those situations in your company and that can ultimately be a major weakness because that means you have team players who don't know their play. Right. You throw them the ball and they don't even know which way to run. <laughs> um, and so uh, that could be a huge weakness in, in, in our companies overall. So, yes. I've, I've seen this come up in, in my organization when someone comes in that seems like they have the skill of some of, of another position. So they're in their position, they have a skill, and then they start doing what someone else is really supposed to do. And it throws things off balance. And then people are like, well, I was doing that, but she actually does it better. Uh-huh. You know, so when you were thinking then, when you when you were when you were sent when you were speaking, I was thinking, okay, so 
maybe that means for me as the leader that mm -hmm. although it might be something that comes under administration, then maybe I need to make it come under, you know, the paralegal because that's really the people that know how to do it or, or are excited about it. Yeah, and excited about it. And, or even sometimes you have to have those sort of stay in your lane conversations. Okay. And those are pretty difficult to have, but sometimes you have to say, well, you were hired to do this. I really need you in this space in order for our company to grow in advance. And perhaps they could be uh, of assistance or help or even a mentor to the person that's in that space. But I really need you over here. Okay, got it. That's mm -hmm. good for me. That's mm -hmm. good. Mm -hmm. And, and, um, Oftentimes we get hired to do that. <laughs> you know, we've been hired to fire people. <laughs> uh, it's true. Uh, so um, I remember one of my first clients I started working with years ago uh, in Lansing, we were actually hired to fire uh, a whole group of folks. And I'm like, okay, well, you know, but uh, the goal is for everyone to stay on the team, um, but to sort of fine tune with those job skills and job um, responsibilities are those job descriptions, if you will. Um, that's the best outcome. Yeah, yeah. So let's see here. Uh, let's go to our thank you uh, breakout session one. Thank you, thank you, thank you. <laughs> right? Okay, let's go to group two. Group two. And I believe Wilmer is our spokesperson. Uh, okay. okay, good evening to everyone. Uh, in our group, we have a combination of four, uh, three kind of businesses, two of consulting, one of logistic and transportation, that is the travel business, and uh, one of construction business, that is games. Uh, we were discussing our uh, view of the strengths, the weaknesses, the external opportunities, and then we try to summarize the common ground that we have in our businesses in terms of, stre of strengths. Uh, the main theme here is that our, all of our businesses are basically customer centric. Uh, we bring personalized services, and also we have a very professional staff. And only in our businesses, these three main strengths are applied in, the, in, the, in our different areas, but our customer expect us to have these strengths, okay? In terms of the external opportunities, uh, the main thing that we, that we discussed, obviously all, all, uh, discussing different businesses and the different opportunities in the businesses, but the main theme is expansion. We find opportunities to expand, for example, the, in, in one of our, our members of the group, expand into the supply chain management, mm -hmm. expand into the supply chain using IT, and uh, in the transportation, expand uh, in different kind of service of, for transportation, in terms of the transportation of the cannabis, the legalization uh, businesses and the transportation for the elderly people to go to their appointments, and also the possibility to work with uh, multinational companies. So the opportunities are there, and we see that there is an opportunity for expansion. In my, in my case, expansion into the aerospace cluster that is uh, kind of growing here in Puerto Rico, uh, but in weaknesses. Okay, the main theme also in weaknesses uh, that, we, that we observe in all our businesses are basically funding and operational budget that is low mm -hmm. due to the pandemic. Um, and for the expansion, if, if we consider the expansion opportunities, one of the weaknesses in the logistics businesses uh, is the fleet size. So we need to expand the fleet size. We need to deal with the equipment to, to, to find and to, and to make uh, the, the opportunity real. Also, one of our members was uh, is pivoting into another kind of, of, of business. So the main weakness is being new in the industry and the lack of network because of the lack of knowledge of the industry. Mm -hmm. This is the weakness, but the main thing also is 
not to be uh, stopped by the weaknesses. We have to be aware of the weaknesses and find a way to, to go around them or to, or to, or to uh, find other ways to, to surpass them. Okay, in terms of threats, definitely also the main thing is the possibility of more competition. Okay, and mm -hmm. the corporate travel is decreasing, is a threat. And this is related to the others, the main threat that is the, in, in my case, in Puerto Rico fiscal crisis and shrinking economy, but it's also compounded by the post pandemic possibility of the global recession. Mm -hmm. So as you can see, all the threats that we can identify are external threats to the businesses. Mm -hmm. And if the other members of the group want to add anything, or if I, if I forgot anything, you are welcome to do so. And this is our report. Very good. So is there anyone else from the group two? That was all men, you know, the men were, uh, discussing their businesses. That was a great uh, group. I think it was James, Nigel, and Travis um, were all in that group. I'm not sure if any of them have any additional comments. I do know one of the things that you mentioned, uh, Wilmer, um, in the area of weakness, oftentimes we hear, um, you know, needing capital, access to capital, but also resources. And especially uh, during the pandemic, there were a variety of uh, economic development groups, uh, chambers of commerce even, um, and just uh, business organizations and associations right in our uh, backyard who were offering uh, small business grants. Uh, some of the grants were uh, statewide grants. Some of them came from your, your county. But uh, there were also, I know in Detroit, Tech Town was offering a, uh, a grant. Um, so there were several economic development corporations and groups offering five and 10 and $20,000 grants uh, to okay. small businesses. And um, a weakness could be uh, like someone in your group mentioned, just uh, not knowing that and not having yes. those uh, relationships uh, and networks. Uh -huh. mm -hmm. You can go ahead. Yes, definitely, because uh, you were mentioning that, but uh, I didn't have any knowledge of this, for example. Mm -hmm. And not necessarily what is uh, available nationwide is available in, in, in the island. Yes. Because so, so there are some instances that everything applies the same in both sides of the Atlantic but not necessarily we have the knowledge of many things that are applying in the United States and we can be part of that, but we don't have the knowledge. Right, absolutely. So just uh, not having those networks and, where, and knowing where to go to find uh, those opportunities. Yeah. Yes. Very good, very good. Okay, let's, um, anything else from group two? I hear someone trying to come on. Group two. Okay, so let's give a round of applause to group two. Thank you, Wilmer, for leading that group. Thank you, James, Nigel, and Travis for being uh, in that group or anyone else I may have missed um, that was in that group. Demetrius is giving you guys a round of applause as well. Thank you, gentlemen, uh, for... Uh, Group two. Okay, so now we will have um, the girl bosses, group three. We have Miss Owens uh, leading the group. And are you ready, Miss Owens? I am. Okay, group three. Good evening, everyone. Good evening. So we have three industries here. We have the healthcare industry, we have farming and beekeeping, and then we have online retail. Um, I'll break broke all three of them up. So I'll start with the healthcare industry. Um, Dr. Oki Token um, listed her strengths as she has 30 years in the, in the healthcare field. Um, she's primarily in the primary care patient arena. Um, weaknesses she has um, 
it's overhead because she's based in DC and of course the rental market um, for commercial is extremely high and due to COVID business has you know been a challenge but she still has to keep her office space in DC in order to keep her business running so that's one of her challenges um, revenue generation is another weakness that she has and lack of knowledgeable staff. Um, one of the opportunities for her company she uh, mentioned was the fact that prior to COVID, um, she had training in um, learning how to do telemedicine, so virtual visits. And then when COVID hit, she was easily able to pivot and offer that service in order to keep in income coming into her company. So that was one of her um, big opportunities that she was really proud of. Um, a couple threats she listed were um, that the larger corporations are able to come in and take up the marketplace more so from the small businesses that are affected because of COVID. And they're also affected because of the regulations um, that, were, that are, I mean, yeah, the requirements that are administered by the regulating bodies that some of the smaller companies don't have enough, you know, income or um, expertise on staff in order to help them meet the regulations um, that have, excuse me, been set forth. Mm -hmm. um, then I'll move on to um, Miss Beatrice Kamau. She has Multiple Harvest LLC, which is an urban farming and beekeeping, and she's out of Chicago. Um, her strengths are she has 40 plus years of farming experience um, with food growing and beekeeping. She's had this business since 2017. Um, and another strength she has is that food is always in demand, which is very true. Mm -hmm. yes. um, her weaknesses she listed um, were funding and lack of land accessibility. Of course, mm -hmm. in all urban areas, especially in you know, bigger cities, mm -hmm. land is very limited. Mm -hmm. So that's um, some of her, one of her weaknesses. Opportunities is that she's a niche market with the beekeeping. Um, you don't hear a lot about beekeeping in urban areas anyway. Um, threat, of course, would be weather unpredictability. Mm -hmm. And then for myself, um, Cine Chic, which is an online retail space that I just started June 14th. Um, it's still very new and I'm still trying to learn this whole space. Um, I was traditionally, um, I had 17 years as a hair salon, so I was brick and mortar. So mm -hmm. pivoting into the online space is, you know, very interesting. I mean, it's a good thing because everybody's at home right now, everybody's online, but just being able to gauge what the consumer wants, you know, cause there's a lot of competition out here. Um, with what people want. So I'm just trying to figure out the space. I haven't really like, I didn't really do my whole SWOT analysis thoroughly, but that was the presentation for the group three. Yes, and you know, you're absolutely correct. Everyone is home right now. It is time for your business to thrive. Yeah. I plan on buying the Christmas presents that I will be buying. I plan on buying a good 90% of them online. online. Right. And so now is your time. So you want to make sure that, and that's why I said, when I came into your group, you said, oh, I'm not really going to do one because I'm new. And then when you said e-commerce, I'm like, e-commerce, <laughs> now is your time. And so um, definitely go ahead and look at your company. Um, and we'll get into this a little bit more um, in regards to um, planning out uh, your actual organizational plan, mm -hmm. but check out your competitors and see what they're doing, what their pricing is. You right. know, are they offering free shipping? What are their Black Friday sales? Right. Send me your website. <laughs> okay. You know, uh, because people are buying online and, um, you know, so you'll, you'll find that you'll be able to acquire a lot of new customers. But, um, <laughs> you know, some of the things that really stood out in your group was your first person who had over 30 years of goodwill. And um, that alone, we find, especially in the minority communities, you know, businesses like that who've been able to uh, stay afloat 
and stay in business and they know uh, their industries. You're actually an expert. Anything you've done for 30 years, uh, right. you are an expert uh, in that industry. And to be able to capitalize on your expertise and your knowledge and apply that uh, to your business growth. And so uh, having those years of goodwill speaks volumes to your speaks volumes to your competitors and to your investors. And um, uh, don't be afraid to uh, to uh, stand on that foundation of five, 10, 15, 20 years uh, of being in business and doing something well and still being afloat. And then the other thing uh, you mentioned uh, was the overhead as a weakness. Uh, we do have to be very mindful as small and medium-sized businesses of uh, the amount of uh, costs that we're spending um, in regards to overhead. And, um, you know, that can make or break your business. I know in the franchise space, uh, we outline right out the gate the minimum and maximum square footage for a business, um, a franchisee to commit to if they're considering opening up a franchise. We set those uh, guardrails there, if you will, uh, that they're not allowed to uh, open up in a building that's over, say, 2,500 square feet or under 1,000 square feet. Uh, we set those guardrails there because we know in certain markets that, um, you know, and we, and we say, you know, don't spend more than $20 per square foot or whatever, uh, because again, that that is a very, uh, important part of the overall budget uh, mm -hmm. for your business. And so uh, overhead costs and, and being in DC, places like DC and LA and New York, Chicago, downtown Chicago, even in Detroit now, um, finding the appropriate spaces to be able to operate your business um, could, could be a weakness and it would take uh, additional resource, research for you to uh, find the best uh, cost-effective, right, appropriate places to run and operate your business. Um, and then, of course, you mentioned weather. Uh, someone mentioned weather. I believe it's the right. bee, the right. beekeeper. And the uh, farming. Yes, I'm really excited to hear about the beekeeper. Actually, Beyonce just announced that she's starting a beekeeping business just last week. Oh. <laughs> uh, so that may uh, be a good connection for her. Um, but uh, weather, you know, in a lot of our uh, southern states and just business in general, the weather could be uh, very uh, unpredictable and it could have a direct effect uh, on your business, uh, especially uh, individuals who are, you know, in, um, in that sort of tornado alley or in those hurricane uh, states at the bottom, you know, you never know what's going to come. We, we can't predict the weather. We don't know, you know, when storms are coming. Um, but even, even doesn't necessarily have to be a catastrophic storm. Uh, we know in Michigan and Chicago, uh, we have some of the coldest winters known to man. <laughs> and so uh, you have to gauge what your sales are, are going to look like, especially if you are a business that rely heavily on foot traffic. Mm -hmm. um, I think, was it last year, the year before, Chicago had a negative 52 degrees <laughs> uh, day. Uh, if your good business is a foot traffic sort of business, uh, the likelihood of you having customers that day, very slim. So just being mindful uh, of the weather as a threat. And um, that's why Dairy Queen is typically open from uh, Memorial Day to Labor Day. <laughs> um, but uh, definitely the weather as a factor, depending on your industry. I believe Mr. Webb, uh, he's in construction. He was in group two. Uh, I'm sure the weather directly uh, affects some of the things that uh, he's doing as well. And so um, let's give uh, group three a round of applause. Thank you, group three, Girl Power. Um, their presentation was also outstanding. Thank you very much uh, for participating. And so we're gonna uh, shift and keep moving. Uh, we're up against the clock and it's a lot of good information and content. We just have a few more slides before we conclude our day. And we're gonna move right into uh, the first step of pre-development, which is pre-development. And so now it's time for you all to start thinking about what your uh, operational uh, uh, plan is gonna be for organizational development. And we always uh, advise our clients to put together a checklist of things to consider um, 
in the franchise space, we have a checklist of what makes you franchisable. Do you have these things in place? Do you have your EIN number? Do you have your trademarks? Do you actually own your name? Um, do you um, have a business profile in place? You know, do you have a list of vendors and suppliers? Same thing in the global business space. When, when businesses are considering uh, going into new global markets, new territories, uh, have you actually uh, researched uh, the areas that you want to go into? Have you partnered with groups like the Chicago MBDA Export Center, right? Uh, so that they can uh, introduce you to Exim Bank and all the other resources uh, that's going to be needed in order for you to go global. So uh, start thinking about some of the things that best fits your company and create that checklist. Some of the things to consider is are you currently imp implementing an organizational uh, policies and procedures? You know, why or why not and what should they be? Is your entire team on board with your current plan? So the likelihood of you of having your entire team on board with a new plan is slim if your entire team is not on board with the old, old plan, <laughs> right? So we need to get some buy-in at all levels. Uh, it's very important when we're uh, instituting new, new plans and new ideas, having the entire uh, team on board uh, with your current plan and anything new that's on the horizon. And then of course, who is responsible for implementing your current plan? Uh, that might be a conversation um, that you need to have maybe with your GM or yourself, right? <laughs> About, you know, uh, why don't we have a plan? Uh, what do I need to do to ensure that we do have a plan? Uh, number four, what are some of the concerns you're facing with your current plan? You know, is it not working because we have a lot of new people? Is it not working because we have a lot of old people, right? When I say old people, I'm saying people who've been with you for a long time and they're just really used to doing things a certain way or even their way. Um, these are things to consider. Uh, you'll have your own ideas that you include in your checklist, but these are just some things to consider. How long have you implemented the plan? Is it time for you to uh, have an intervention? Someone to come in and review your plan or to make a change or make a shift. And you'll hear the word in that organizational um, development space, the OD space, if you will, you will often hear the word intervention. Uh, we're going to interrupt this program, right, uh, to, to look at something new or to do something new. Is the plan imp implemented in every area of the company? So if we have a pretty large company and our goal is to acquire new customers, um, that has to not only be the goal and desire of the owner or management, but that has to be the goal and desire all the way down to the receptionist on how we, because really, the, your receptionist is on the front line and someone's calling and wanting more information about your business or the services you offer and how they can engage with you. If your receptionists have not uh, adopted the plan of wanting new customers and they just see that person on the other line is more work for them, <laughs> right? Uh, the likelihood of them um, you know, being on board and really implementing the process of, hi, you know, how might we help you? Here's our website, you know, offering them information that may or may not be on their top priority list. Uh, so we need to make sure that everyone is on board uh, from beginning to end, from top to bottom uh, in regards to uh, the plan. Uh, and then number seven, how often is the current plan evaluated? Every plan uh, must be evaluated so that you can determine whether or not uh, it's working. And um, we'll talk about this as well. You know, if you are currently uh, utilizing a plan, an organization development plan, or even an operation plan, if you will, um, you know, how often are you actually uh, looking at it? So, um, Step two talks about strategic planning. And then there are a lot of ways that businesses can um, plan strategically. And I always refer to uh, very basic strategies uh, for business, simple goals and objectives. Um, goals, a result or achievement, which effort is directed or aimed. You know, we're aiming at something specific. And then objectives, the efforts or actions intended to attain a, uh, a purpose or targeted goal. 
And so we often talk about SMART. Some of you may have uh, be familiar with the SMART process, if you will, think SMART, right? Create new goals and objectives that are easy for everyone on your team to understand and adopt. Sometimes your people from top to bottom have not adopted it because your goal is too complex. So we wanna make sure that it's something easy for everyone can, uh, everyone can buy into it. Um, it says the secret of change is to focus your energy, not on fighting the old, but on building the new, not spending a lot of time on the old, but on building the new. And it takes a very special person to sort of block out some of the old things and focus on the new. And I think uh, President-elect is doing a great job with that. Strategic planning, S smart, be specific, be measurable, attainable and realistic and timely, right? Uh, specific, be clear on what you want employees to achieve. Make sure that it's measurable. Um, when we're planning our goals and planning things to do, how are we gonna measure it? Be able to quantify the goal in order to track progress. One of the recent projects I did with the World Bank is I work with the team to create a, a qualitative and quantitative analysis for them to actually um, uh, assess where they were in regards to the relationship between the franchisor and the franchisee um, in Saudi Arabia. And we needed you, uh, Attorney Evans, at the table uh, <laughs> because the purpose was to mitigate some of the uh, litigations uh, that was going on between uh, the franchise or franchisees. Because as you know, a lot of these companies, a lot of these countries just allow franchises to come in to their country. They saw the money, they were really excited. They grew really fast. But then who's going, what department of government is actually going to oversee them or manage them? And how are we gonna handle all these lawsuits between the franchise or franchisees? So making sure that, uh, that it's measurable and you're able to qualify or quantify um, what's going on in the business so that you'll have hardcore facts on this is what's going on and why. Um, make sure they're attainable, realistic. You wanna uh, be optimistic and ambitious, but, not, but make sure you aren't setting your team up for failure. You know your folks. <laughs> You know your people, right? You know your team. I know right now if I need something done right away on my team, who I can call. I know right now, depending on what it is, who's going to get it done right away and who's going to get it done tomorrow. <laughs> you know, you know your team. And so uh, make sure, you know, you're not setting your team up for failure. Um, and so you want to create a goal that everyone is motivated to complete. Uh, with the resources available. And of course, making sure that it's timely, providing uh, deadlines so that everyone has a date that they're working towards. So we won't have the situation that we had with our um, person earlier today who, you know, is the project due in two weeks or three weeks. So that's a big difference. <laughs> so let's see. And then, um, placing those goals with the specific departments that you have in your company. So uh, this is an example of a goal or objective um, in each department. The technology department had to buy into it. The marketing department has to buy into it. The sales department has to buy into it. Um, so every one, every department where you begin to get really specific and um, and I think this is important. And this is how you are sure that you're gonna have the outcomes that you're looking for because every department is on board with the plan and goals that you set for it. And um, I, I believe Robert's still on. I'll be making all the slides, of course, available to uh, the entire, um, all the participants so that you guys can go back and take a look at some of these things. So you wanna write down your goals and objectives. There is a worksheet in your workbook. You can do this uh, individually or you can do it with your team um, at a later date, but keeping in mind um, they're written down and they're uh, something that your entire team will be able to um, 
imp uh, implement in your company? And then um, based on the objectives that you set, look at the different departments in your business. So even Ms. Owens, although your business is new and you may be a one or two man show, you still have different departments and areas of your business. You have inventory controls, right? You mm -hmm. have ordering and shipment, you have quality control. Uh, if, you, if you're online, so you have a, a commerce store. So there's a, some technology that's involved that has a lineup with your goal. So um, all of you take a look at the various departments that you may have uh, within your own individual company. And then you're able to uh, make sure that, each, that your goal is aligned with each department in your company. And I know we have just a, a few more minutes we're right at our uh, right at the end of the day here, but I did want to uh, close out to see if anyone had any other questions about uh, the SWAT or um, your goals and objectives, the various departments uh, before we sign off. Dr. Sherry Demetrius, I, I do have a question. So once you once you put the plan in place. What happens when something else comes up that we have to focus here? You know what I mean? Like, so, so one of the goals that I'm trying to get the team to do right now is for every department for us to get together and everyone give me the goals for their department. But let's just say, you know, something comes up that kind of interferes with that then are you then saying, okay, let's get together and reset these goals? Or do you, you know, are you like, it doesn't matter, you know, we're going to keep going with when it's set or when, when, yeah, the, the dates um, that we've set. So um, especially times of the pandemic, everyone sort of had to, the, pan, the pandemic just sort of invaded <laughs> everyone's plans, but you'll find that oftentimes that it's easy to get distracted and but when we when we shift too much, we never sort of get to our target. Um, so maybe if uh, with having a team of three to five people working on a specific goal, you may have to peel off one or two individuals, and then the other three continue uh, working on that particular goal. Where now we're walking, chewing gum, and hula hooping. Right. Um, and sometimes that happens in small business, but you want to try to stay focused on a, on obtaining that particular goal so that you are able to um, give it a fair evaluation of whether or not it worked. So if you're if you have a goal that you're working with and a plan that you're working on and you've had to pivot so much, it's difficult to give that particular thing we said we were going to do a fair evaluation because we didn't give it 100% of ourselves. So if at all possible, you want to try to stay on target, stay on goal so that you can um, see, so you can, of course, fairly evaluate it. And then again, write down what worked and what didn't work. Thank you. You're welcome. Any other questions? Okay, we are right at 6.30 Central Standard Time. And so this concludes our first session and I will